Pearl listeners. I oh, know my hair. I have hat hair, and it's probably kind of kind of sweaty. I just got in. Had to go to another town. About it's a town my youngest daughter lives in, Concord, and it's about. 30 35 minutes away guess what they have a hobby lobby and i had to go by the walmart so i checked out walmart too walmart had absolute their walmart's yarn sections teeny tiny nothing good except they had one jazzy there and i couldn't remember who liked jazzy i should have just picked it up but i didn't but Hobby Lobby, I know I didn't get much at all, and I did get paid, but I still got to be very careful. But the cable's all taken care of. Most of all my bills, except little ones, are taken care of. So, I got a little bit. This is right pretty. It's pink, white, gray, dark gray and light gray. And you've seen other people unboxing it. The Baby Bee Cozy Cutesy Pinkaboo. And 741 yards because, y'all, it's fuzzy, but it's itty bitty. And it looks bigger because of the fuzz, but they still, you know, because of the fuzz, usually they go up or whatever. But this one they didn't because they say it's a number one. No, sorry, they say it's a two. So, it would probably be a one if not for the fuzz. I gotta dig down in there and find, I'm not gonna screw it up until I get ready to use it. But anyway, be a good big baby blanket for a human baby. I got plenty for my other baby. This stuff is so soft, y'all. This is gonna be... A shawl, a poncho, whatever I can get out of it. And it is called... So I got some of this before, but I don't... I got some of this, and I got a different color, but I can't remember what it was. Anyway, this is Soft Illusions, and I knew I had some. don't remember how much. This is Leafy Treetops, and I cleared them out of this. They didn't have much clearance at all there. So, what's that? Three, four, five. But then, like I say, I had some from that other trip I took, I think. Either that or I had gotten it before a sale. I don't remember, but I think I got it on sale. One little Arabella, and it's orange, orange, orange. Orange, orange, orange. But it could be a hat. And the color is Sunset. It's the only one they had. And the only other thing that I liked was this. And this is not at all soft. It feels like tinsel. But it wouldn't fit. Well, yeah, it's prickly. So, this might be a holiday poncho. I don't know. I got one quite a bit. And this was $174. I forgot to tell you prices. And this is also a size 4, 6, 5, bulky. 65 polyester, 35 metallic polyester. It's 111 yards. It takes a size 10 needle and a size L hook. And it's called, did I say, rose gold. And it's got a kind of a cow pattern, but I don't believe I'd want this on my... It's not awful, but I just don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven or eight. Anyway, that's it. That's all she wrote. And these were $1.62. And I didn't tell you the deets on this either. It's 65 acrylic, 35 polyamide. Takes a size 11 knitting needle and a size M, as in 13 millimeter crochet hook. 
And like I say, I got five of those. And this one Arabella is 105 yards. It's a size 4, 55 cotton, 45 poly. I love the cottony feel. See, y'all get to see that. I may not show that on my live. See? Y'all get some little treats here and there. If you care. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Okay, let's see what Anne's up to. In chapter 40, a book of Revelation. The Irvings came back to Echo Lodge for the summer, and Anne spent a happy three weeks there in July. Yay! Miss, I like this, Miss Lavender. Miss Lavender had not changed. Charlotta the Fourth was a very grown-up young lady now, but still adored Anne sincerely. When all's said and done, Miss Shirley, ma'am, I haven't seen anyone in Boston that's equal to you, she said frankly. Paul was almost grown up, too. He was 16. His chestnut curls had given place to close-cropped brown locks, and he was more interested in football than fairies. But the bond between him and his old teacher still held. Kindred spirits alone do not change with changing years. It was a wet, bleak, cruel evening in July when Anne came back to Green Gables, one of the fierce summer storms which sometimes sweep over the gulf was ravaging the sea. As Anne came in, the first raindrops dashed against the panes. Was that Paul who brought you home? asked Marilla. Why didn't you make him stay all night? It's going to be a wild evening. He'll, re he'll reach Echo Lodge before the rain gets very heavy, I think. Anyway, he wanted to go back tonight. Well, I've had a splendid visit, but I'm glad to see you, dear folks, again. East, west, home's best, as in home. Davy, have you been growing again lately? I've grown a whole inch since you left, said Davy proudly. I'm as tall as Milty Bolter now, ain't I glad? He'll have to stop crowing about being bigger. Say, Anne, did you know that Gilbert Blythe is dying? Anne stood quite silent and motionless, looking at Davy. Her face had gone so white that Marilla thought she was going to faint. Davy, hold your tongue, said Mrs. Rachel angrily. Anne, don't look like that. Don't look like that. We didn't mean to tell you so suddenly. Is it true? Asked Anne in a voice that was not hers. Gilbert is very ill, said Mrs. Lynn gravely. He took down with typhoid fever just after you left for Echo Lodge. Did you never hear of it? No, said that unknown voice. It was a very bad case from the start. The doctor said he'd been terribly run down. They've a trained nurse and everything's been done. Don't look like that, Anne. While there's life, there's a hope. Mr. Harrison was here this evening, and he said they had no hope of him, reiterated Davy. Marilla, looking old and worn and tired, got up and marched Davy grimly out of the kitchen. Oh, don't look so, dear, said Mrs. Rachel, putting her kind old arms around the pallid girl. I haven't given up hope. Indeed, I haven't. He's got the Blythe Constitution in his favor, that's what. Anne gently put Mrs. Lynn's arms away from her, walked blindly across the kitchen, through the hall, up the stairs to her old room. At its window, she knelt down, staring out unseenly. It was very dark. The rain was beating down over the shivering fields. The haunted woods was full of the groans of mighty trees rung in the tempest, and the air throbbed with the thunderous crash of billows on the distant shore and Gilbert was dying. There is a book of revelation in everyone's life as there is in the Bible. Anne read hers that bitter night as she kept her agonized vigil through the hours of storm and darkness. She loved Gilbert, had always loved him. She knew that now. She knew that she could no more cast him out of her life without agony than she could have cut off her right hand and cast it from her. And the knowledge had come too late, too late even for the bitter solace of being with him at the last. If she had not been so blind, so foolish, she would have had the right to go to him now. 
but he would never know that she loved him, and he would go away from this life thinking she did not care. Oh, the black years of emptiness stretching before her. She could not live through them. She could not. She cowered down by her window and wished for the first time in her gay young life that she could die too. If Gilbert went away from her without one word or sign or message, she could not live. Nothing was of any value without him. She belonged to him and he to her. In her hour of supreme agony, she had no doubt of, doubt of that. He did not love Christine Stewart, never had loved Christine Stewart. Oh, what a fool she had been to realize what the bond was that held her to Gilbert. To think that the flattered fancy she had felt for Roy Gardner had been loved, and now she must pay for her folly as for a crime. Mrs. Lynde and Marilla crept to her door before they went to bed, shook their heads doubtfully at each other over the silence, and went away. The storm raged all night, but when the dawn came, it was spent. Anne saw a fairy fringe of light on the skirts of darkness. Soon the eastern hilltops had a fire-shot ruby rim. <clears throat> the clouds rolled themselves away into great soft white masses on the horizon. The sky gleamed blue and silvery. A hush fell over the world. Anne rose from her knees and crept downstairs. The freshness of the rain wind blew against her white face as she went out into the yard and cooled her dry, burning eyes. A merry, rollicking whistle was lilting up, up the lane. A moment later, uh, Pacific Butte came in sight. Anne's physical strength suddenly failed her. If she had not clutched at a low willow bough, she could have fallen. Pacifique, I guess, was George Fletcher's hired man, and George Fletcher lived next door to the Blythes. Mrs. Fletcher was Gilbert's aunt. Pacifique would know if, if Pacifique would know what there was to be known. Pacifique strode sturdily on along the red lane, whistling. He did not see Anne. She made three futile attempts to call him. He was almost past before she succeeded in making her quivering lips call Pacifique. Pacifique turned with a grin and a cheerful good morning. Pacifique, said Anne faintly, did you come from George Fletcher's this morning? Sure, said Pacifique amiably. I got to word last night that my father, he was sick. I, it was so stormy that I couldn't go then, so I start very early this morning. I'm going through the woods for shortcut. Sounds like from Louisiana. Did you hear how Gilbert Blythe was this morning? Anne's desperation drove her to the question. Even the worst would be more endurable than this hideous suspense. He's better, said Pacifique. He got the turn last night. The doctor say he'd be all right now this soon while. Had close shaved, though. That boy, he just kill himself at college. Well, I must hurry, the old man. He'll be in a hurry to see me. Pacifique resumed his walk and his whistle. Anne gazed after him with eyes where joy was driving out the strained anguish of the night. He was a very lank, very ragged, very homely youth, but in her sight he was as beautiful as those who bring good tidings on the mountains. Never, as long as she lived, would Anne see Pacifique's brown, round, black-eyed face without a warm remembrance of the moment when he had given to her the oil of joy for mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. Long after Pacifique's gay whistle had faded into the phantom of music and then into silence far up under the maples of Lover's Lane, Anne stood under the willows tasting the poignant sweetness of life when some great dread had been removed from it. The morning was a cup filled with mist and glamour. In the corner near her was a rich surprise of new-blown crystal-dewed roses. 
The trills and trickles of song from the birds in the big tree above her seemed in perfect accord with her mood. A sentence mood, excuse me, a sentence from a very old, very true, very wonderful book came to her lips. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. That's one of my favorite quotes. And that's it. Uh, <laughs> cliffhanger. I bet you now she's going to tell Gilbert what she thinks. Chapter 41 is called Love Takes Up the Glass of Time. Mm. Y'all be sweet, don't be ugly, and have a wonderful Thursday. You never know when I might come on again with some video of something else Granny's up to. <laughs> Uh, I got a little, oh, the other thing was at Hobby Lobby, yeah, Hobby Lobby, I got some more clay. I didn't get the big 34 or $36 pack. They had an assortment pack that was like 13 or so. I also got flowers, uh, silk flowers for my parents' gravestone. So I may take you with me when I go and make a little arrangement there. It needed it. And I hope I've got enough flowers. If I don't, I'll have to get some more to fill in, but hopefully I do. Those things are expensive. Anyway, uh, oh, and the other thing, I got my brother, he's diabetic, but I got him some sugar-free chocolates, assorted chocolates. And I got me another bag of these. And what do you think? I left them at Walmart 30 some minutes away. So I, when I piled all over my van and couldn't find it, I called the Walmart. And they just like, come tomorrow and we'll give you whatever you didn't get. I guess they just take your word for it. I'll take my receipt, but I mean, how do they know I did? I thought if I called that soon, it would still be sitting in a bag at that register and there would be something on my tape register that would tell me which register I was at. Whatever. But, gotta go all the way back to Concord to get those candies. But, they ain't cheap. So, anyway. My brother's birthday, September 3rd, and Arabella Jean, my the manager, the oldest grandbaby in Florida, is going to be 13 on the 17th, which is also when I announced the Harvest Moon giveaway. So, anyway, I got him that for his, at least that little thing, and I was going to get him something else. Bells were sending money because, you know, 13 year olds, they like to buy their own clothes and, and such full of holes, jeans full of holes. <laughs> anyway, love you bunches, and I'll see you live at five, if not before, on some video or other. See ya. Love you bunches. Bye-bye.